Hi, welcome to Medstern Photography. Today we will be um, editing one of the photographers on my group that entered a, a video for consideration uh, or to be edited. Sorry, I'm still getting used to all of this, so um, please forgive me, guys. Um, what we've got here is, is we've got a picture of a baboon. Um, the framing is basically leaving the baboon to sit right in the middle of the image and uh, the way that I usually start this is, is I'm just going to hit it with a, a auto on Lightroom um, to get a starting place. I'm going to go in lens corrections, not going to play around too much. Um, chances are that the head is going to be distorted Yeah, The head gets distorted here on the side. So I'm happy with that. I've tried this a couple of times now, so um, I basically know already that uh, camera calibration, I'm going to go to camera standard. Um, so that is fine. Um, one of the other things that I'm going to do right off the cuff here is I'm going to take this image out to um, 1 8th and I'm just going to bring in some um, borders here. Now if you check on the right there you'll see that uh, this is a custom um, gradient that I created and this basically just allows me to give a bit of control to the light coming into the image just nice and soft on the edges and uh, what you can see is that um, sorry about that, uh, is that I dropped the exposure by minus 40, dropped the contrast a little bit uh, and then uh, just regained some highlights and then we're just going to drop in from the bottom a little bit just to get a little bit of definition back into the image of detail and I'm quite happy with that, um, a person can always go back to um, Put in a bit more at a later stage. I'd just like to have a basic concept of what the light in the image is going to be like uh, before I really start working on the image. Um, a person's got to have an idea what you want to do with it. Um, what we're also going to do here is, is we're going to look at a couple of things where you've got to consider what is your standard look? What is the way that people recognize your images by? And one of the things that I do is, is I drop the uh, a contrast uh, and then at a later stage uh, insert the contrast that I want in Photoshop. So in this case we're going to go to a nice uh, minus 25. Look, you could have gone back um, the contrast that, uh, that uh, is in there is very nice and uh, that will serve you well if you just want to do a quick edit but we're not here today to do a quick edit. So, um, I'm going to uh, pump in the lights a little bit. All right, to about there. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my, um, I'm going to regain some of the highlights. I'm going to regain quite a bit. Um, I'm going on a minus 70 here. We're going to regain some of the shadow details. Uh, we're going to go to about a plus 40 there. The image seems very flat, but you must remember that at a later stage we're going to add all these things in. Oh, by the way, now seeing myself in the monitor, it's terrible. Forgive this. Don't get time to get to the to the hairdresser. All right, uh, there's way too much whites in here. Uh, I'm going to bring the whites down a little bit just to get the image where I want it. Now leave it at about a plus two. Bump the clarity to about a plus fifteen or twenty. Uh, with animals you can do that, landscapes, automotive, all those type of things you can you can certainly take a risk to do that. I'm going to bump up the vibrance to about a plus 20 and then I usually just drop the saturation a little bit. Alright, uh, in the, uh, on the tone curve uh, we're going to uh, be adding and uh, regaining more highlight and then an uh, interesting thing that I do is actually I like to start doing it here and let's go to about a, a 
my minus 50 on the black so basically what I take out from the from the shadows I put back with the blacks um, but it it sort of give, uh, gives me more control um, sorry it's so weird seeing myself on the screen uh, let me explain the setup here I've got my DSLR uh, uh, up there and then I've got um, a 23 inch LED monitor connected to my DSLR uh, below it so I can see myself the whole time uh, it is like speaking to the mirror weirdo yeah but let's try and do this the people have asked that I do this uh, let's do it all right we're going to take the dogs down just one more there and you see how the image is starting to get a, a, a sort of a dimension already it is starting to to to, to show a bit of uh, character character all right so uh the other thing that i like to do is i like to work in uh, the u saturation and luminance um, section of lightroom uh, now ordinarily when i work with people i might play with the uh, with the oranges and so on today i'm not going to i'm simply going to do a bit of a luminance uh, a, a separation uh, between the yellows all right and the greens i'm going to drop them just to get a bit of color separation on the raw file already all right um, just having a quick look through the image there's nothing major there uh, I'm gonna drop the oranges minus 5 on saturation the yellows I'm gonna drop a minus 5 in saturation and then the greens I'll bump up um, to a plus 20 or so all right so uh, that being the section here's one of the things that people uh, regularly wants to know is uh, how do I stupid thing is battling to focus how do I deal with um, noise uh, noise reduction uh, in my images the noise reduction starts in Lightroom um, it is important to start working on this little bit by little bit uh, year already and uh, then obviously just finish it up in um, Photoshop going to add a tad of sharpening um, I tend to bring more detail out uh, rather than sharpening so I'm going to bump this up to about let's go to I usually go to up to 70 but let's be a little bit more moderate moderate today uh, at 50 so um, masking it uh, I usually run the mask relatively high I'm actually going to take it to a 95% mask and then turn up the luminance to about 30. Okay, uh, I don't really know what this does, I just usually put it halfway and that to more or less halfway. Alright, so we've basically come to the end of uh, this Lightroom section for me. Uh, I usually take it to about here and then from here on out I treat it in. Um, Photoshop um, white balance um, is the next thing one of the the uh, things that we can do when we shoot in raw is to be able to um, change the white balance of the image at a later stage uh, when we're editing it in Lightroom so I'm just going to compare a shot versus automatic automatic is a bit cold for me a shot seems to have a bit more to it um, then the next thing that I can do is, is I can just go over to an area that is in the grayscale and we can check what that gives us I like how that warms it up um, it is a bit too warm for me though so I'm gonna drag it down and just judge it by R to about there and I'll dial back the reds a little bit too all right so all in all that is um, what I would do with the image in Lightroom now uh, look a person can do uh, a great deal more with this um, in Lightroom in fact you can probably edit the whole uh, image in Lightroom uh, they've got beautiful um, uh, tools within Lightroom to be able to do this all right in this uh, at this stage I'm going to go back into the gradients and we're just going to drop in a little bit more to deal with the light coming in again 
just shaping the light a little bit. Just shaping the light. Like I say, as you are more than welcome just to have a look what I do with the yeah, on the right with the sliders to create this uh, what I call border, borders alternative and uh, just check what that gives you all right so I'm quite happy with that and I think at this stage this is ready for export I'm going to export this um, purely for the for the for the fact that um, people have asked me uh, how do I export my images usually I'll just swap over from yes straight to uh, Photoshop but let's export this right click on the image export set the export settings we're going to stay in the sa uh, same folder as before I'm going to put this um, second try <laughs> even though it is probably more like my 10th time I'm trying to do this I uh, see that this lens has got a bit of a problem if I come too close so I'm going to try and sit here at the back all right I'm not going to rename the file. Oh, let's rename the file a file just for interest sake. Uh, we're going to edit that and I'm just going to basically give it um, a custom name of Tanya. Um, Tanya's Lagoon. Just so that we've got that. I'm not going to go into much detail. I'm quite happy with that. And uh, we're going to take it out in TIFF format. Uh, because we want to work in the 16-bit component of uh, the image uh, and then the color space I'm going to leave it in um, Adobe RGB because we're working in Adobe so I'm quite happy with that uh, there is some people that take it to Profoto I've had it in Profoto and um, I don't quite get that yet so maybe one or other time I'll get one of my friends uh, to give us attention on that uh, I'm not going to resize the image, I'm going to uh, leave it at its full value. Now, at this stage, your DPI depends on whether you're going to print the image or not. Uh, your standard print is usually done at around about 300 uh, DPI, dots per inch, and, um, uh, well, pixels per, uh, per inch. Um, I'm going to set this way up, should I want to... Um, enlarge it at a later stage just to make sure that I've got enough uh, a dynamic there or enough there to be able to do that not going to do any sharpening anything let's export this uh, I'm opening the, uh, the TIFF file now and what I'm going to be doing here is, is in order to save time I'm going to be running actions but I'm going to uh, um, talk you through them so one of the first things I want to do is I want to convert it to lab mode. So we're going to convert it to lab mode. What well, bang, it is done. Uh, denoise. Uh, denoise works with um, uh, the uh, uh, surface blur, um, but it is on the lightness channel. Um, I'll show you now what I mean by lightness channel. In your uh, uh, lab mode, you've got um, lightness A and B instead of your RGB that you get in um, normal RGB mode. Uh, so the uh, noise reduction is, um, the denoise is run on uh, the lightness channel. Sharpen, same. Uh, it is also on the lightness channel. And uh, that is done. I'm now going to merge the two together. Um, just so that we keep the file size relatively small. Uh, we're working with a big image here uh, in 16-bit and we're working uh, with multiple layers uh, which can cause problems. Uh, I'm doing a frequency separation. I'll do a video on frequency separation at a later stage and um, then um, <clears throat> just so that you know what that does. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using the benefits of working in lab mode uh, where your lightness and your color is separated from each other. And then on top of that, I'm doing a, 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 a frequency separation. And the frequency separation basically gives us a structure removed from uh, tonality and colors. And now I'm going to run another sharpen, but I'm only going to run it on the higher layer. Now, when you do it in, on the higher layer in the frequency separation, what you get is, is, is that uh, it is basically going to uh, just affect the the, um, the structure layer within frequency separation and then reduce um, any ghosting of, of the sort. Um, 
I would actually like to zoom in so that you guys can see what happened here. Uh, we're at 66% and uh, I'm just going to turn it on and off just so that you can see what happens there. Uh, there's a lot of um, clarity coming into the image and because we're working in um, lab and uh, frequency separation you'll see that um, the the halos that uh, you get when you sharpen uh, is far less. Remember now that I'm not only sharpening what I'm doing is, is I'm duplicating linear light um, uh, onto the image so that in itself is going to give you a bit of ghosting. Uh, there's no ways you're going to get away from that but we keep that to a minimum and uh, let's go with 25% uh, where we started off here all right so just the before and after there again there you go all right uh, from further away I don't know if you'll be able to see but notice how the eyes of the baboon just pops all right so in order once again uh, for my poor PC to keep up with this I'm going to play my action uh, wrap it up and basically what it's going to do is, is it's just going to merge some layers there that's all it's going to do all right so we're going to wrap up uh, that and the next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to flatten this image and we're con uh, going to convert it to back to RGB just so that we can make uh, use of all the benefits of working in RGB which is basically being able to work with black and white filters all those type of things a lot of your filters will be grayed out in lab uh, so just be uh, just notice that all right so we're gonna uh, flatten and convert to RGB all right um, I'm not just going to use frequency separation within the RGB color mode and uh, then play around within that all right so frequency separation within RGB once again basically what it does is it does a Gaussian blur on um, uh, the, uh, the lower level uh, let me show you that all right so it does a Gaussian blur on that then it runs um, a difference uh, I think it's difference or subtract subtract uh, uh, subtract with some settings 128 to whatever uh, I'll do a separate video on that at some stage and uh, then it uses the top layer and it is on blending mode of linear light all right so uh, without the bottom layers that is basically your structure layer anything that you do on this um, will obviously then affect just the structure not color all right so turning back on the other images um, the next step in my, uh, in my uh, work uh, workflow is portraiture we're not going to use portraiture yeah um, I don't think it is necessary uh, because we're not sitting with skin so what is what is the point sometimes I do um, we're going to do a global contrast now global contrast is basically like a high pass filter that is created um, just to pump in some contrast into the image uh, that was taught to me by a friend called Alan Riddell uh, and I then took that and um, I implemented it uh, in on my workflow in order to work on the structure layer and just give it that bit of a bump all right so uh, one of the things that I like to do when I do this is, is I like to do denoising again so um, in this case I use software provided by Topaz and I use the denoise straight just as it comes out, uh, out what the PC select I'm happy with that I'm running a standard um, uh, on that so basically what I'm going to show you now is what difference does this additional layer within your frequency separation give you in the image and that is basically it but notice one thing that it is creating like a, a tiny halo around the highlight uh, the highlight area so anything that is going to be sharpened or clarify it basically creates like a mini high, uh, halo which gives it that sense of clarity and depth but um, it is not always as beneficial so once again moderation is the word here we know that we've reduced we've reduced um, 
noise in the structure layer and uh, we know that we have put in a bit of clarity there by running that global contrast on top of that that high pass filter. At this stage what I do is, is I bump back my high layer to about 95% just to give it a bit of smoothness again. Now especially when you work with human portraits that helps a lot. It reduces the amount of uh, retouching that you have to do at the end of the process. Alright, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm going to then flatten these layers. I'll flatten or merge that group. Alright, just so that we can see what is going on there. Very slight modification. Uh, we're going to fit on the screen. Very slight modification that has taken place there. Nothing noteworthy. Uh, get some clarity. I uh, actually got as part as a, uh, of a, um, a free um, action set that um, I downloaded from the internet. So at this stage, um, I'm going to teach you a trick. Before I run any of my clarity or contrast, what I do is, is I create um, black and white version of the image. Okay, so I for that I use Silver FX Pro from the, uh, from the next uh, Nick collection. Hoping that this doesn't bomb out the recording on my um, PC again. And I'm going to just go with a standard standard. I'm not going to use any of my. Usually I would go with something like a finish it, uh, which just reduces the the the, the, uh, the contrast again with 10%, adds in a bit of uh, structure, and then you'll see I protect the highlights, uh, but not the shadows. All right, I'll do that and uh, add that on there so that you can see the full process. All right, so we're back. What I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to take this uh, black and white conversion that I've done and um, I'm just going to uh, run that, get some clarity. Um, it creates a bunch of um, filters and stuff. Uh, it runs auto processes, uh, all that type of things. Um, and then it basically gives you the opportunity to to play around with the contrast and uh, the brightness afterwards. I notice here that the brightness is a bit hard, so I'm just going to tone that down a little bit. All right. Flatten the image. All right. And as you see, it made a stamp, uh, image stamp. So I'm going to control all there, uh, copy, close that. You don't need it. Control V. All right. Just throw that over now. The next thing that I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do a high pass contrast that I did earlier within the structure layer. Um, I just want to make sure, okay, yes. And I'm going to run that on top. Uh, that seems to be okay. At this stage, we're basically working with the black and white. Uh, you can make adjustments within the black and white layers uh, as you please. Um, what I like to do is once I get to this point, I take the layers and I turn it to luminosity blending mode so that I can work with what the eye sees. I'm actually quite happy with what it does here. The only thing that I do not like here is the amount of detail that it is bringing in on the background. All right, so I'm going to go on that and I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. Right, and then merge these layers together. All right, so just in the second part uh, of the processing that we've done in Lightroom, I want to show you the difference. Because we're working with such minute uh, bits of alteration to the image, you don't really pick up what, what is happening. But that is, in effect, what has happened. All right. So now, usually for a standard edit uh, for Matt Stern Photography, this is about where I would end. Um, this is a, a question of, it's done. Um, but let me take you one step further today. Let's run another frequency separation. All right, and let's play with light. Let's get back to the low, uh, low layer. Now, this is the, the color and tones layer. 
and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll add a layer there and uh, then just zoom back out a little bit just so that we can play with um, what we've got here. I'm going to turn the blending mode to soft light. My foreground color, uh, let's leave it like that. All right, I'm going to go to a soft brush, turn it down to approximately 10%, all right, and put a flow of about 35. Right. Now with soft light, you're going to have sections of your of your image um, being lit up, and some of it is going to be burned. Essentially, that's what it does. Um, I would like to bring a bit of uh, warmth into this image, so I'm going to go with an even bigger brush, all right, and just bring a bit of natural color into the background. Your oranges, your actually, I'm going to... it's not very happy with the brush strokes I'm making. The PC the RAM memory is really battling with that. Right. Just brushing a bit of natural light or color. This is what you would expect in nature. It doesn't look like much, but we've actually added quite a bit. I then run a Gaussian Blur on that color layer just so that it blends very nicely. And then I'll tone it down by eye. Now, for this, I might actually want to go to actual pixel size. Right, space bar, and just drag the image where I want to be. Um, there's still quite a bit of noise in the background. Let's zoom out one to 66%. Alright, I'm quite happy with that. But I'm going to go to 75%, I reckon. Alright, let's see that. Right, that that is a, quite a significant change, and I'm actually quite happy with that. All right, so merge it down. Might keep the image bigger than what it should be. Uh, I'm going to go to the next layer. I'm now going to go back to white light, uh, and I'm going to stay on. I'm going to use screen. All right, and basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to brush in. A little bit of light everywhere we are we are want all right so we're just gonna that is too much but we'll reduce it just now the Sun is really creating havoc right there's not really a lot of places where I want to add additional light here all right definitely not in the background all right uh, run a Gaussian blur all right and reduce it a little bit Okay, around about 80%. Alright, so great stuff. Uh, we've added in a bit of light there. I'm quite happy with that. Actually, I can reduce that even a little bit further. Okay. Uh, always trust your eyes. Trust your eyes. Alright, and merge that down. Okay, so the before and after here already quite a significance in warmth um, we might want to tone it down a little bit and that is very easy what do we do we take the frequency group merge the group and then on the group we can just tone it back a little bit to reduce the amount that was done okay merge down Okay, so I'm going to do another interesting thing. What I'm going to do is, is uh, let's just first have a look at the difference between uh, what we brought out of lab and what we've got now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the color a bit. So, flatten the image. Uh, then I'm going to take it into the lab mode. Alright, and now you'll see me working in the background. Alright, I'm going to go to the channels. I'm going to work on the on the uh, lightness channel uh, not so much lightness in this one I'm just going to work with color I'm quite happy with the dynamic that I've got there I'm going to go into image adjustments curves and this basically works like Lightroom uh, with your temperature and your tint sliders this is about what you get when you work here so if I take this one out to the right it's going to 
add magenta all right so let's go one block in I hope you guys can see that there and then in order to keep this image balanced what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go right at the bottom and just bring uh, the greens up a bit so basically what we're doing is, is we're just bumping the color a little bit if you see that once again it is minute but when you take the original uh, 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 the photo that came out of your camera and you compare it to what you have done up until this point then you'll see a significant difference all right uh, so I'm gonna okay it there and we're gonna do the same for the B channel we're gonna go with curves and we're gonna bring up the, the dose of the blues as you can see all right we're gonna bring in the blues and then we're gonna add oranges to, uh, orange to that so yeah you can like really play all right so but once again just a nice and balanced right in the middle through the center and what it does is it just warms up that image it just gives it a dimension it gives it good color and um, you're happy with that all right lightness if i do play with it uh, it is usually something that can take me for ages uh, take me ages and uh, one of the things that i do is i come in do a simple auto and all it does is it just adds um usually just adds a bit more light and then in this case i'm just going to take that i'm just going to drag it over i don't want as much as what the machine usually gives all right so we are there now we're going to convert back to um, rgb all right and um, image mode rgb color and we've basically got a complete image at this stage you more than um, set with what you've uh, accomplished in the editing 